All right, so I'm just going to kind of recap a little bit about what I talked in part one of The Harlot, and then um, I'm going to just sort of add to the story a little bit. Okay, so, you know, back in the um, Garden of Eden, of course, Satan came and he tempted Eve. She ate of the forbidden fruit. She fell. You know, mankind, um, you know, has lived in a fallen state ever since then. This basically is the timeline of man's rebellion. There's a sort of another timeline that goes with it, and that is um, the rebellion of fallen entities, of, of spirits, fallen angels, demons, and so on. So after the fall of man, somewhere along the line, uh, angels who had sort of been assigned the task of watching over mankind for, for their good uh, decided that they wanted to intermarry with human women and they took wives, uh, human women, and they had offspring by them. The offspring were the, called the giants or the Nephilim, okay? And the fallen angels are called the sons of God. In other places, like the book of Enoch, they're called the watchers. Uh, the fallen angels arrived, and with them they brought my forbidden technology, forbidden everything, information that was way beyond what they should have had if it led to... Um, there being all kinds of violence and wickedness on the earth. And uh, Dr. Michael Heiser does a really great job of, of sort of uh, helping us to understand the role of the, you know, watchers and how they really corrupted humanity right at the very beginning. Um, not only did they increase the violence the um, and the, the levels of wick wickedness on the earth, but they also um, corrupted... Um, the actual genetic code of people and animals, and it was very, very bad. Uh, so all this information came with the fallen angels, and of course the violence escalated and escalated up until the time when God said, we got to take care of this, and he sent the flood in judgment. He saved Noah and eight people. Okay, so the fallen angels, okay, they, basically at the time of the flood, they were put in to chains and in a pit in a place called Tartarus, um, or, or just the pit, okay? And in Revelation, um, this is where they're kept. They're kept in the pit. Jude tells us that they're bound in chains, that these are um, spirits who did not want to keep their own place, their own habitation, but left their proper abode, which is referring to their body that they live in, and um, took on this human form and did really un unlawful things. They weren't supposed to do that. So at the time of the flood, what happened was this. The fallen angels uh, went into the pit and it's at the time of the end they're going to be released. So this group of fallen angels, sometime after uh, the church is raptured, they're going to be released at the fifth trumpet. Okay, this is when the pit is opened and uh, the watchers, the fallen angels, are released along with Apollyon, okay, or Abaddon. That's when he comes out. The rapture will have taken place before this time, okay, before any trumpets, before any seals. Believers are going to be taken into heaven, people who are um, going to be ruling and reigning with Christ. That is, um, believers who will rule with him. Okay, so that's the fallen angels. They're kings, and they have his king over them, Apollyon. Very, very, very powerful entities. The children of the watchers, this the hybrids, they um, their spirits didn't have a place to go. If you were a human spirit, um, and uh, a human, and you died, your spirit would go to Sheol. If you were one of these uh, watchers, you went into the pit or Tartarus, but the spirits of the Nephilim or the giants didn't have a place to go because they weren't, they were neither fish nor fowl. They were neither um, a, a watcher, angel type, neither were they human. So they became the demons, okay, that wander the earth looking for a body to inhabit. The demons were on earth prior to Babel. Okay, as soon as they died in the flood, their spirits were released into the world. And it's these de demonic spirits that helped to energize what was going on at Babel as well with this cabal. And even in the book of Revelation, we read about how um, the habitation of 
Babylon, Babel, Mystery Babylon is a, ha a habitation of demons and that these people worship demons and they don't give up the worship of demons because they derive their power from demons. So this demons are going to be on the earth all the way through to the end as well. Okay. So God confused the languages, which helped to um, basically mitigate the evil that would again, you know, go beyond repair. Um, so people spread out over the whole earth, and that's how Babel came to be on the four corners of the earth. Okay, so time goes by, like thousands of years go by. Um, Babel is still the, um, in the world, okay? The seeds of Babel, the people, the Babylonian ideas, Babylonian type civilization, Babylonian hierarchical structure, all of this is still in the world right now. It's gaining power. It's gaining power and momentum toward the time of the end. Someday, hopefully soon, we're going to be raptured. After that, immediately after that, immediately after our rapture, uh, there's going to be trumpets one through four and seals uh, one through four, actually seals one through five. And then the fifth trumpet will blow and the pit will be opened and will release Apollyon and all these spirits. All right, and these spirits are going to be stinging people uh, who don't have the seal of God. Of course, the 144,000 will have the seal of God, so they're not going to be stung, but other people will be, and um, that's going to be a problem. And I, my personal belief is that if these people will turn to Christ, um, that they will be saved and healed just as the story in the book of Exodus tells us when people were being bit by the fiery serpents, all they had to do was look at the brazen serpent on the pole. And Jesus said that was him, the brazen serpent on a pole, and they would be uh, saved and healed. I believe that's the same kind of deal that's going to happen after the fifth trumpet is blown. But after the seals, okay, which have to do with the white horse rider, that's the Antichrist, is going to come out on the scene after our rapture. But remember, there's only three and a half years that Israel has in her timeline. The first three and a half years of that 70th week of Daniel was Christ at his first coming. When he threw, um, uh, put an end to sacrifice and offering through his death on the cross. Okay. He came to establish the covenant or to strengthen the covenant that God had made with his people. So Israel only has three and a half years left of their timeline, which will begin at a time we know of as the abomination of desolation, which is when the beast is going to take his seat in the temple of God. It's a real temple that will be rebuilt, and I believe the two witnesses are going to do that as part of their job uh, when they actually make a visible appearance. Um, at the time of the abomination of desolation, that's when the man of sin is going to be revealed. Uh, uh, the pit will be opened, Apollyon is released, and, and it's the beast who ascends from the bottomless pit who's going to kill the two witnesses, okay, remember? And we also know that the seventh king is only going to be here for a short time. He's going to die. He's going to have a mortal head wound, and he's going to come back um, when Apollyon indwells him. And then uh, three and a half days later is when the abomination will happen. And that's when the 42-month reign of the beast begins, okay? It's at this same time that there's going to be, uh, the remnant of Israel is going to flee into the wilderness for 1,260 days. The time when the beast is going to ascend from the bottomless pit and be placed into a resurrected body will be on first fruits, okay? That's the what we commemorate as when Jesus rose from the dead. The, the demons are influencing the harlot, okay? And Apollyon is going to be indwelling the Antichrist. It's right here on the same day as the abomination of desolation, okay, that we have the sixth trumpet, and that is when the harlot is destroyed. A third of the earth that makes up the controlling globalists and all their minions, and the cities that they um, are, are centered in, it's, and it's more than one city, that's all going to be destroyed, okay? And God has already put it in his 
appointment book. There's an hour a day, a month in the year when he's going to do this. Uh, this is non-negotiable. Um, this is when it's going to happen. And, you know, as far as Satan is concerned, ready or not, here I come. The harlot is going to be destroyed at this time. The harlot will continue for a brief while until uh, the bowl judgments. And at the seventh bowl, it says that God is going to remember Babylon the Great and do her in totally. And, of course, then right after that is Armageddon, and that's when um, the beast and the false prophet get thrown into the lake of fire, and it all gets wrapped up. And also, I believe that these fallen angels will be cast into the lake of fire along with the beast and the false prophet. Now, these fallen angels, the, their king is going to enter into the guy we know of as the Antichrist. Okay, He's not going to be controlled by Satan. Satan is like the fake God the Father, and uh, the beast is like the fake God the Son. And he's going to be indwelt by Apollyon, who is the king over all the, the angels of the bottomless pit. When the false prophet comes on the scene and ask the earth dwellers to participate in this uh, creation of the image of the beast. I believe it's the watchers who are going to be placed inside of people, just like Apollyon is placed inside of uh, the Antichrist, who is a man, that the there are going to be people who are made into the image of the beast who will have these fallen spirits placed inside of them. And, of course, um, they're going to be thrown into the lake of fire when Christ returns as well. Okay, plus anyone who took the mark. Okay, and I taking the mark is not the same thing as being made in the image of the beast. They're two different things. Just like during the millennium, there's going to be people who are in the image of Christ, believers, and there's going to be regular mortal people who are going to have to swear allegiance to Christ in order to be in his kingdom. And the same thing is true during the beast kingdom. There's going to be just regular people who are going to have to swear allegiance to the beast, who they think is Christ. They're going to think it's Jesus. They're going to think it's Christ come back. And there's also going to be people who are going to be in the image of the beast, who are going to be very powerful beings, very powerful. They're not really even men anymore. They're, you know, fallen angels, indwelling people. Very, very weird um, scenario. Those are the people who are going to be uh, uh, regular people who ha just have the mark, who only have the mark, are going to have to worship those who are made in the image of the beast. Okay, so this is sort of how the timeline goes. And that very first rapture is going to be before any seals. Because remember, the 24 elders are in heaven when the Lamb takes the scroll. Before any seal is opened or any trumpet is blown. And they are not going to happen over the course of seven years. They're going to happen very, very rapidly, one right after another. Um with the seals overlapping the trumpets. If you're interested in learning more about this, I have a PDF, timeline templates. You'll be able to see how the timelines work, okay? So the wrath of God is right here with the bowls, and it's gonna start with the sixth and seventh seal, the sun going dark, the moon turning to blood, and the, before the great and terrible day of the Lord, and then at the very end here of this 42 month, 1,260 days, Christ will return um, at Armageddon, and that'll be that, and then we'll have the millennial reign. All right, so that's my understanding of how things will work. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video. We'll see you on another video. Till then, I pray you'll have a very, very blessed day.